it's Mike with Ugtastic. I'm here again at GoToConf 2014, and I'm standing here with Adrian Colcroft, who gave the keynote, uh, the kickoff talk here at the conference. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about what your talk was about and, and how you came to give that talk here at GoToConf? Sure. Um, thanks for having me on this. The, uh, the talk really came from... Uh, there's two pieces to it. The, the first part was uh, about how to speed things up mm -hmm. and the speed of innovation being very important and how to think about what is innovation and what is disruptive mm -hmm. rather than what is uh, kind of the incumbent um, sort of existing companies and the way they do things. Right. And so the, there's this uh, phrase that uh, I kind of hinged it around, which is, uh, it, it ain't what you know that messes you up, it's what you know that ain't so. It's a... <laughs> Will Rogers quote, and uh, a lot of I have the to untie that one. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of the disruptions that happen in this industry happen because an incumbent figures out, okay, we're going to we have an idea, we're going to we know how to optimize for that idea. You build a build business model around it, and then you go off and build your business, and then somebody else notices that one of your assumptions is no longer true. And you're optimizing for something that used to be really expensive, but mm -hmm. now it isn't. So, and then you. Um, the, the, the disruptor basically takes advantage of this thing that, that everyone else has assumed is a big, expensive, hard-to-do thing mm -hmm. that has now become cheap and easy. So you end up wasting a lot of something, and it looks horrifying to the incumbents, right? right? So they couldn't possibly do that. You know? um, but the, you end up disrupting the industries that way, and there's a number of examples that, of that that I went through. Yeah, because th the first thing I think about is is data, uh, databases, you know, mm -hmm. that we, we have... Oracle and MS SQL, that they're Microsoft, they have these big monolithic products. Mm -hmm. But then along comes open source products like MySQL and Postgres, which are now running mm -hmm. huge operations. And before, I mean, they're, they're still incredibly intensely yeah. difficult project pro, uh, problems they're solving, but they're able to take and, and disrupt uh, the business of Postgres. Yeah. I mean, of, of Oracle. And, and so, yeah, so really the open source itself is one of those, the, the concept of open source, mm -hmm. the concept that the best software you could buy is the stuff you get for free mm -hmm. that's built by a community is something that is sort of alien to the, the you know, traditional enterprise software businesses where you have a product manager who comes up with an idea and then they go away and work on it for a few years right. and then they pop out with a product and try and sell it to you for a lot of money. And historically, that was how you bought stuff because right. it was the best stuff you could get and these companies knew were the places that knew best how to build things and mm -hmm. I worked for Sun Microsystems for a long time and you know part of that process but what really happened was the best things you can get now are free right. and they are built by communities and the best engineers don't work at those enterprise companies they work for end users so you know the the, the most interesting scalable reliable uh, software now is uh, are coming from open source projects, and uh, I, I highlighted a, a few of those in the talk. So that's one disruption. Mm -hmm. Another one I mentioned was solid state disk replacing you know, spinning rust right. to traditional disks, and that the way that that has completely taken what used to be a, a, a it's a multi trillion dollar business or whatever it is in mm -hmm. storage. And if you look at the way that the, a Cassandra-based deployment on AWS is, there are no storage admins, there's no SAN, there's some SSD inside an instance, and that's all there is. Mm -hmm. So the person managing it is probably a Java distributed systems programmer, right. developer type of person with a little bit of operational experience to automate how to keep that thing up and running. But there's no, the, the whole layers and layers of sand fabrics and, and storage arrays have completely disappeared. So it's not just that you disrupt the product, you make the entire product category disappear. That, that's one of the most disruptive things that's going on right now. I have to think about when you're talking about trying to change the mindset of, of people who've built their business, their entire business on a certain set of assumptions and, and looking at more of a, just a human uh, quirk there. I was just reading an article about how uh, people who have deeply held beliefs that they've internalized into their own uh, 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 persona, yeah. their, own, their own personality. And companies that, do that yeah, too. And that's the only way to get them to change their thoughts. You can't just say, here's a fact that you, what you know is wrong. You have to just change literally the way they think mm -hmm. and, and, and address their personality. Is that something that um, 
we need to think about when we're dealing with these companies that are have these deeply embedded, uh, entrenched, I should say, not embedded, but deeply entrenched processes like this is how we build software because this is how yeah. things are done. This is how we develop products yeah. and how we can approach. Do you talk about a little bit of how we can approach those those kind of thought processes and, and, and address yeah. them and work within them? Sure. Um, so I talked about a few other things. I, have time. Yeah. I had a whole hour, so there was a lot of things I covered. One of them was... Um, Sort of continuous delivery as a as another way of disruptively speeding things up, and the, the assumption you're making there is that um, you can you can move a lot quicker. But the what it really comes down to is the the DevOps kind of approach, where you're you're actually taking away the handoffs between teams. So everyone knows that you know developers have to stay in development and operations people run their code, and they're different kinds of people, and they optimize for different things. But if you reorganize so that you you put them in the same organization, you you, you blend those responsibilities and you automate everything. Um, it's not just that you create a DevOps team. It's that you actually have to reorganize your company and have a cultural change. So DevOps is, in many ways, a cultural problem. And it, companies that get over that are the ones that are doing well. So somebody tweeted a few days ago, um, is DevOps ready for the enterprise? And that was a question. Um, my response was it's the other way around. Uh, the enterprises that are ready for DevOps are the ones that are going to disrupt the enterprises that aren't. Oh, okay. So right. they're they are, they're gonna just either gonna just knock out the ones that aren't. It, yeah, it's much harder to compete if you're running. Uh, if if you if every time you do a product release, it takes a year to get it to customers, mm -hmm. and your competitors doing it in a few weeks, um, and learning, and you you know they run rings around you. Right. So so that is the sort of existential challenge that a lot of um, companies are make, getting through right now. As and the other. Big changes that software used to be a little thing on the side for a lot of companies, mm -hmm. and now it's it's central. It's central to everything they do. It's central to the way they do marketing and sales, and uh, build things, and the way they support customers, and the way they deliver products. Uh, Internet of Things is just one aspect of that. But what you're seeing is this whole software eats the world, mm -hmm. driving people. And now it's central. They have to get good at it, and so they're looking to the big enterprise company, the big web companies, as examples of how to do that. Uh, Netflix is one example. It's very, very rapid development process. Um, Google, Twitter, um, Facebook, all, all of those companies are leading in this space. Mm -hmm. And uh, the enterprises around the world are trying to figure out how do we learn, what do we learn from them, and how do we adopt it. Yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. You can... so, so that was kind of the first part of the talk. Mm -hmm. The second part was some more practical things about what that actually means in practice for a developer. There's some techniques and, you know, I was trying to make it a little bit more hands-on um, and a bit more detailed. So the talk was kind of a little in two two sections. Yeah. Uh, the, the reason that what I was about to say is that I interviewed Bill Scott, uh, who's with PayPal, and he talked about how it was fresh off of the acquisition of Braintree and how PayPal is trying to rethink their entire business process. And they were looking at, at, at companies like Braintree who were able to deliver these things in a lot of people in the press I, that I heard were looking very skeptically on PayPal acquiring brain trust, thinking, okay, well, I'm brain tree. That's, well, that's going to bust the brain trust at brain tree. That, that's mm -hmm. why I say that 10 times. Um, but when he described it, they said, no, we're, we're looking at how they do things and really trying to figure out how to bring those into our operations in a nutshell. Um, sure. I, yeah, I worked with Bill Scott when he was at Netflix, and mm -hmm. I actually worked at eBay, PayPal back before I joined Netflix, mm -hmm. so I get some of the, the challenges there. You've got a successful business, and it's working, and then you have to, you know, PayPal has this big challenge from, from other you know, financial processing stuff like Square and Stripe and whatever. The, the, those companies are, are, you know, we're more agile, and, and PayPal's trying to respond to that. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're doing a pretty good job, and what what Bill's doing there is is good work to move them strongly in that direction. Great. It's good to see. If you were to go and just flip a bit in everybody's uh, head, it was in your in your talk, and and have them take home at least one uh, factoid, what would or one idea? What would you like to have impressed upon them the most? I think from sort of questioning the assumptions you've got. Right. Look at look at the way you're operating, what you're doing, and 
uh, what assumptions you're making. And if you're assuming something and optimizing for it, and then you look at the trend for that thing, and you know it's either going to suddenly stop being true or over time it's going to stop being true, um, make those explicit and get out ahead of those examples. And sort of what the, one of the key things that Netflix does, it tries to lean into the future. If there's a trend towards cloud, they'll get in early and they'll dive in and they'll learn how to get good at it before it's really ready for mass consumption. But, and, and that is a, a, a very powerful technique for learning how to take full advantage. So once it becomes mass adoption, you're already well optimized for it, so you have that advantage. Okay, well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you. User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way. Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugastic.com.